Hello, everybody. And welcome back to the channel. <clears throat> President Biden didn't say why he was dropping out of the 2024 presidential election during his primetime address. Now, he did say that he was uh, staying as president to fight for democracy. Even though we're a constitutional republic, even though the people decide our future versus some elites up there in Washington, D.C., that's the difference between a republic and a democracy. Democracy is where the, the majority tells us what we should do and how we should live. That's pretty much how the Democratic Party is run. The, a select few up there is telling the American people, we're going to give you this amount and you're going to be happy. Then we're going to keep the rest. And we're going to sit it here and we're going to do this. We're going to do everything we want, but you're not going to have a say. That's why President Trump got elected, because nobody was listening to the American people. In a constitutional republic, we control the government. But in a democracy, majority rules. But that's what we got. They always talk about there's he's a threat against democracy. He's a threat against democracy. Yeah, he's a threat against you trying to control everything up there in Washington, D.C. and not listen to we, the American people. <clears throat> but, you know, over 11 million people voted for this guy to be the nominee of the Democratic Party. All 50 states voted. They didn't have a democratic process, as they call it, where they had people like the Republican Party did, where they had these nominees up on the stage and they debated the ideas and, and policies in which people could vote on and say, hey, we want this person to be our nominee. No, they coronated Joe Biden and say, hey, we're not going to have that type of process. We're just going to say Joe Biden's our man because he was president. Even though they knew the vice president knew and everybody in his cabinet, the press secretary, and even the people on these news agencies knew Joe Biden had declined from the time he got elected to the till like till last weekend. They knew he had a cognitive decline. But yet and still, everybody went out there and put on this front that Joe Biden was, was the man until this debate. Then everything that they were trying to hide got exposed in about 30 seconds. The whole country and around the world realized that Joe Biden has a problem. He's not cognitively the same as when he first got elected as president. He actually wasn't the same before he got elected. He still had that same issue, but they voted for him nevertheless. And so they want you to believe that nobody in his cabinet knew that he had an issue and that he's going to step aside because he wants the next generation to take power. And he wants Kamala Harris to be that one. So if they can lie to all of you, and it was exposed on that debate with him and Trump, if they want you to believe that what you saw, you did see. But now they want you to believe that Joe Biden is doing the honorable thing and stepping down to allow Kamala Harris to be the nominee. Who voted for her to be the nominee of the Democratic Party? Joe Biden is not running because all the money had dried up. He was exposed for having a cognitive decline and people were not going to vote for him. His policies had failed. When you go to the grocery store, you can thank Joe Biden. When you go to the gas station, you can thank Joe Biden. When you pay your utilities, you can thank Joe Biden for raising all of those costs. When you have illegals that are murdering your children, you can thank Joe Biden and Kamala Harris for that. But yet still, they want you to believe that Joe Biden was cognitively there, that he's running for re-election, but all of a sudden he decided, well, no, nah, I'm not going to run. I'm just going to give it to my vice president. Let her carry the torch. I'm not buying that. But you can. You can vote for her. I'm not voting for her. I want to play a clip. When she was running in 2020, and... She was exposed for her record that she claims she wants to run on. That's so that's so perfect that she's going to stand up against President Trump. I want to run this clip so you can see <clears throat> that her record is not what, she, what it's supposed to be, what it claims to be, and how she took advantage of people and dishonored her record as a prosecutor. But this is the record she wants to run on. I want to bring the conversation back to the broken criminal justice system that is disproportionately negatively impacting black and brown people all across this country today. Now, Senator Harris says she's proud of her record 
as a prosecutor and that she'll be a prosecutor president. But I'm deeply concerned about this record. There are too many examples to cite, but she put over 1,500 people in jail for marijuana violations and then laughed about it when she was asked if she ever smoked marijuana. She blocked evidence. She blocked evidence that would have freed an innocent man from death row until the courts forced her to do so. She kept people in prison beyond their sentences to use them as cheap labor for the state of California. And she fought to keep cash you, bail system in place that impacts poor people in the worst kind of way. Thank you, Congresswoman. Uh, so that particular takedown right there cost Kamala Harris the election in 2020. I went back and did my research on that, and everything that she stated was true. There was a man on death row. She was hiding evidence. There were prisoners kept <clears throat> past their time for cheap labor. All of that's documented, and everybody knows it on the Democratic side, but nobody will talk about it because they have whitewashed y'all into believing that Kamala, Kamala Harris is now all of a sudden a savior for the Democratic Party. But if you are willing to vote for her simply because she is quote unquote black, which she's not, she is biracial. Her father was Jamaican and her mama was an Indian. That does not make her black. That makes her a biracial individual. I have a daughter. Mother's white. I'm black. My child is biracial. She's not black. Even though I sometimes think that she's black, even though she's real light skinned, she's not black. She's biracial. But hey, y'all can vote for her. She's not done anything in California for black people, but locked them up and misused them. And as a lot of people like to say, she slept her way to the top. But I'm not going to go there. But that's the, the narrative that's out there that they're trying to squash. If you come out against her, that somehow you're racist. Her number, her two major issues that she's going to run on is that she's a black woman, which she's not, and that she's standing for an abortion. She's standing for abortion. Those are her top two issues. And if you vote for her for those two issues, then you are just as bad as Biden to allow our country to deteriorate on those two issues alone. When you are struggling right now to make ends meet, and if you vote simply because of a woman's right to abort her baby, or the fact that she thinks that you're racist because she, quote unquote, is black, then we, that's your vote. You can do it with as you will. But you see who I'm voting for. And I stand with them 100%. I'm not backing down. I, I did great under President Trump. And I hope to look do great under him again when I vote for him in 2024. Let me know what you think down in the comments. If you can like this video, hit the like button. Please share the video. If this is your first time here at the Retired Vet Show, please consider subscribing. And as always, God bless you all. Stay safe.